Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan MSP. This is Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 18th of October 2023. Before we go to the front line, to the map itself, let's have a, a little dip into Max23's uh, thread here to say uh, the Ukrainian soldiers have destroyed another Su-25 in the Tavria direction. That's a very large area to, to um, needle in a haystack, but significant. If this has happened, this is the fourth in a week. The fourth Su-25 in one week taken out. That is, that is a significant loss of planes. I'm probably going to do a Dell. He has in it below, I, I think it's on the description to all of my videos, he has uh, an open source Excel spreadsheet that compiles all the losses over time that the general staff release. I'm going to probably... Take some time to go through that again uh, to see what has happened over the last few weeks. It's been some weeks since I've done that, but anyway, that's a significant loss for the Ukrainians. Right, let's go to the for the Russians. Sorry, let's go to the map that uh, shows you the movements on the front line. Not a great deal of movement, to be perfectly honest. Please check out the map key on the screen now. Pause the video if you need to find out what the different lines mean on my map. Right, let's go to the northeast sector. And we're going to go up to the Kupiansk, to Svatovo, to Kremina. Axis will actually start right in the north near Kupiansk. Just to northeast of Kupiansk is a, a town called Sinkivka. Previously, the red line here represented by, um, or that represents Surat maps pro Russian mapping line. Previously, Suret Maps had said that the Russians are much further forward and Sinkivka was almost, in, well, partially encircled on, on a few of its dimensions there, but has been walking it back slowly over time. I think it was overconfidence there. Likewise, Andrew Perpetua had some change to his mapping in this area to show Ukrainian success there. Well, if we dip into a few of the sources, here we have Global War Monitor saying in the Kharkiv region, uh, Ukraine has advanced in the forests south of Limanpeshi and southern, the southern part of the settlement is now under the grey area and Ukrainian forces are 300 meters, 350 metres from entering the settlement. That is quite a big turnaround from what was being claimed that the Ukrainians were under the kosh in this general area. As you can see, quite a significant area of land now not under Russian control, as according to Surat Maps, and a much smaller change for Andrew Perpetua's blue line there. Surat Maps does say that the situation on the northeastern front, a large number of erroneous reports about the Russian offensive have appeared in the last two weeks. So this is him walking it back. It, Inkivka is not in the grey zone, but Ukrainian troops have advanced north of it, reaching the outskirts of Leman Pershi, where Russian advances are really taking place. <laughs> of course, it's quite difficult to say, well, are they really? Because you said that previously about Sinkivka. Anyway, he says where they are really uh, advancing is in the Olyansky yahidny axis, where they've reached the outskirts of Ink Ivanivka. Similarly, the news about the capture of Kotal Yurevka is not correct. For various claims... Um, the Russian army has resumed the offensive on this front. However, the Ukrainian army is fiercely defending its positions despite the logistical problems it is beginning to suffer after the destruction of bridges on the Oskil River. Nor will it be pro possible to see changes in the map in the short term in this sector. The war of positions continues. In other words, it's fairly positional. Now, I can't understand what Syriac Maps, Syri uh, Syriac Maps has done here because they indicate some changes, quite significant changes, although the dimensions of this map has slightly shifted. Uh, Significant changes there, but when I look at the actual source map for Surat maps, those changes are not represented uh, in in the source map. And in fact, there's a jig towards Ukrainian gains a little bit outside Sinkivka, even if sorry. So and maybe I missed some changes yesterday, uh, and that's just being rejigged today. And that map actually still includes some of yesterday's changes. That's a possibility. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it seems kind of bizarre. Anyway, uh, the claim is from Surat Maps that the Russians are advancing there. But over in the Sinkivka area, the Ukrainians are having more joy. Um, and then Osink Technical here says, good news for the Russians. The offensive is moving. Bad news for the Russians. It's moving in the wrong direction. Uh, Ukrainian forces appear to have taken the forest north of Sinkivka. 
Kharkiv Oblast, and that's been geolocated, activity there geolocated. So uh, um, that seems to indicate that I indeed the Ukrainians have had some success in that local area. Okay, as we go to the ISW Institute for the Study of All American Military Think Tank, we can find out some more about the general area. The uh, geolocated footage posted on October the 17th, so that is yesterday, uh, in uh, shows that Russian forces have advanced about 1.5 kilometers west of Yehidne towards Ivanivka. Uh, so we'll go and check that out. And the geolocated footage is a destroyed Russian T-72 tank and infantry east of Ivanivka settlement in the Kharkiv region. So this is where the Russians are. We'll see what that signifies. This is the ISW saying this does indicate some advances. Uh, that is exactly where the line is as according to Syriac maps. So potential movement from back, back from where it might previously have been. Again, that might be referring to yesterday's mapping. I just can't remember exactly what the line was there. Sorry. Um, but yeah, there's a difference between Andrew Perpetua's and Syriac maps lines. And it could be that Syriac maps has that more accurate, that they are indeed close to uh, Ivanivka. Uh, the Surat Maps was also referring to Kota, uh, Kotlia Rivka here that there are obviously some Russian claims that that might be under Russian control, but he's saying that is not true. Right, continuing, Ukrainian Eastern Forces spokesperson Yevlash reported that Russian forces are concentrating near Sinkivka, Ivanivka, Stelmakivka and Nadia. Uh, Nadia is, uh, Stelmakivka uh, is up there. Nadia is part of this area that the Ukrainians have been pushed back from. Nadia, there it is, Sahivka, Neva, Novaheya, Rivka, that kind of area that we've talked about a lot recently. Uh, Russian mill bloggers claim that Russian forces continue, oh, right, sorry, in an effort to consolidate advantageous positions before the onset of more challenging weather conditions. So before the winter or well, the autumn and winter set in, they want to try and get as much as they can. So they're, they're building up uh, to consolidate those positions, but can they achieve much? with what they have is the question. Russian mill bloggers claim that Russian forces continued offensive operations toward Kupiansk to improve their tactical positions northeast of Kupiansk and west of Svatova, but that's indeed where Ukrainians have actually had gains. And one mill blogger claimed that Russians are advancing through fortified areas west of Ploschchenka, and they continue to strike Ukrainian crossings across the Oskil River. So the Oskil River is this uh, blue line down there, actually, pretty much the the deeper green of the trees that go along the river there. So they are striking bridges across there and have been uh, for some time. Other than that, just a few of the normal places west of Ploschchenka. That is um, much further down here. Chavona Pop Do you remember when we talked so often about Chavona Popivka and Ploschchenka? Age ago now, isn't it? Okay, right. Now we're going to go on to the Bakhmut area where, as you can see, there is very little change. In fact, I have no sources outside of what the ISW says. And the ISW uh, broadly doesn't say massive uh, amount. There, the, there are geolocated confirmed gains for Ukrainian advances northwest of Zaliznyansky, which I think is uh, fairly interesting. So that is referring to this footage, which is a lottery munition hitting a Ukrainian trench. So let's see where the Ukrainian trench is to give us an idea whether they have indeed advanced in this area. Second. As I uh, completely mess up stuff. Right. So that is exactly where you'd expect to see a Ukrainian French, I don't think that does signify an advance at all. And this is kind of going back to what uh, ISW sometimes claim. And you think, where are you getting your ideas of advancing from? Are your maps that different to mine to think that the Ukrainians were back here and now, now there's evidence they're slightly further forward? Anyway, I don't think that does show an advance. So we continue with the rest of the claims around back. But Ukrainian military observer Moshe Vets claimed that Ukrainian forces broke through the Russian defences north of Klyushchivka. That's possibly referring to uh, the change on the map that I showed yesterday. Slight change for deep state map actually pushing the yellow line here, being pushed. The Russians being pushed back to the other side of the railway, north of the railway. So there is activity there. There's often uh, quite a bit of push and shove going on uh, um, but it's I think the Ukrainians are having more 
success easiest well easiest wrong word uh, they are having definitely more success on the eastern side of the railway as it comes down towards Andrivka past it and then towards Kurdia Mivka um Yev Lash, the spokesperson for the Ukrainian stated that the Russian forces are counter-attacking near Kurdia Mivka and transferring reserves to the area Andrew Perpetua on his live stream was talking about how he was quite surprised that Kurdia Mivka is still being held on to by the Russians and that could be because precisely because they are throwing uh, troops into that sector uh the question is what do the ukrainians do next do they just try and get to this road and stop there they try and take opitni here or do they concentrate further afield maybe to try and get to kodema that uh andrew perpetua thinks is a much better objective i think it'd be quite tough fighting around opitni although it's pretty much rubble now this there are some strategic heights in this general area that would be pretty useful for the ukrainians but that is a long way and you can see how long it's taken them to get from the this is the pre 30th of may so you got may whole of may uh no sorry you got uh june july august september and we're now into the middle of october so that is four and a half months to get there another four and a half months to get there would bring you to next spring the end of you know well halfway through spring next year so I don't know. Uh, something like that would beginning of spring. Goodness me, I don't know my calendar, do I? Right. Uh, questions on the po answers on a postcard. You can let me know what you think uh, the Ukrainians should do around Bakhmut. Is it really interesting? Arestovich, who used to be part of the government until he was kind of sacked around the time that there's that strike on Dnipro Petrovsk, where he claimed that it was a air defense missile hitting or sending off course. Uh, a Russian missile, and that's why it, it plowed into the building. And then there was the evidence for that. There's a big argument. And anyway, because he spoke out of turn, he was got rid of, and he was the almost the spokesperson for the Ukrainian government. He now appears to be positioning himself to run for Ukrainian president against Zelensky. Perhaps that might happen next year if there are elections, which I think would be really divisive. Um, but he is claiming that Bakhmut was just the wrong decision and that the Ukrainians should have concentrated on uh, on just one place and, and gone for that. Uh, I, th I don't know if he says that even defending Bakhmut was the wrong decision. I actually disagree with that. I think ba defending Bakhmut was the right decision. I think it absolutely exhausted Russian troops and, uh, and forces. And I think it was the end of Wagner. That really spelled the end of Wagner as they kind of committed military Harry Kiri on Bakhmut. And the successes that the Ukrainians are having there, I think, are, well, somewhat more um, obvious than successes elsewhere. So I'm, I'm not too sure that Arestovich is, is correct in what he says, but I might have to look at that a little bit more. Right, let's go to uh, Avdivka, where we have seen... An awful lot of activity over the last week, but it seems to have calmed down quite a bit. Uh, Eastal 1 1 here saying, Avdivka Russians continue their offensive with the same results. A column of Russian equipment with the support of the infantry, infantry tried to break through our lines, but did not reach the goal and was destroyed. Uh, lots of this kind of footage coming out, as you can see, and vehicles there moving and then getting targeted. Not quite sure what the timestamp for that is. It goes on to say that uh, the Russians are losing the counter-battery fight, which is something that Russians have been claiming an awful lot, and not just in this area. Uh, they need to hide in a foxhole and pray to Putin, he says. Uh, so the claim from a Russian source is the assault on Avdivka continues. Everything is unchanged. We keep the forts occupied. We resist and die. Counter-battery combat is still bad. And this, as far as I know, is the number one problem across the border. Tank attacked us today. We were hiding in a hole. I'm still alive and well. I have nothing more to say now. But well, sounds like a ringing endorsement of the uh, conquest around there. Right, let's go and look and see what the ISW has to say. Ukrainian, Ukrainian Ministry of Internal Affairs serviceman uh, Morozov has stated that Russian forces have not uh, established footholds in the few positions they captured near Avdivka and are withdrawing from these positions. Prominent Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces are gaining a foothold in unspecified captured positions in the Avdivka direction, however. So two completely different narratives going on here. Another Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces achieved unspecified tactical successes in the southern part of the Avdivka direction. The mill blogger claimed that they are 
unconfirmed re reports that Russian forces are advancing near Stepova and are attempting to advance near Vodzhany and Opitny. Another Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces are attempting to advance near Spartak, but noted that Russian forces have not advanced east of Avdivka. Okay. This is to say that there are there's activity around step over. Now the Russians appear to be unable to get across this railway line, despite what were claimed what was claimed by Rebar in the opening day of this set of attacks. And it seems that they have lost a lot of equipment around there and finding it difficult in these fields and indeed around Terracon, around this slag heap there. The claims are that they might be having some success around Spartak, but they actually aren't advancing in the east. And as you can see here. Uh, well, we've heard mentioned Vodjanye and Opitnye. Here, just north of Pervomysky, according to Suryat maps, there's some success for the Russians expanding their bridgehead going westwards. Uh, don't know if that's confirmed. It's not confirmed by any of the other mappers, although it does fit in line with what... Uh, um, sorry, isn't it? not confirmed today by any other mappers, but is in line with what Deep State map already has, although not in line with what Andrew Perpetua uh, has but then remember all the caveats with his mapping a lot of it depends on surveying su surveilling looking over analyzing satellite imagery for shelling and if there's poor weather which there there is a lot of at the moment and that will make finding movements or finding shelling patterns more difficult um or you know with those with those satellite images right a russian mill blogger claiming to be serving in the avdivka direction claimed on october the 16th that russian forces are stuck in their positions near avdivka and are struggling to advance further due to the ukrainian defenses and that is you know not an uncommon statement we're hearing that actually they're, they're struggling quite a lot there i mean i i, I don't know i presume there there are gains for for the ukrainians for the russians sorry we have seen that a lot in the vodjani area particularly uh, and that and that is agreed upon by m most of the mappers though to differing degrees the question is at what cost as i keep saying like yeah they can make some small gains here and there but are they absolutely exhausting themselves are they degrading their capabilities to then cause a problem for any future attacks or even defenses so I don't know if it's worth it for the Russians in that area. Uh, I suggest you go and check out Andrew Perpetua's live stream from last night. It gives you loads of detail on Avdivka and a lot of detail on Novomokilovka, where the Ukrainians have given the Russians a bloody nose in their attacks here. The Russians have lost 30 to 40 pieces of equipment. I mean, that's confirmed losses, so it could well be more. Although the Russians have also been hammering these settlements with aviation strikes over the last month or so so it is difficult for for the russians but they might also be creeping forward there too uh, and then we come down to velika Novosilka area where it really is pretty quiet uh not too much to report there um the isw has very little to say uh staromilsky and priyutne there are potentially repelled attacks around there those two places um, and then we have some fairly sizable gains from Syriac maps or by the Russians as according to Syriac maps sort of this whole area here gained by them let's see what they have to say about that uh, the situation in Zaporizhia during the last 48 hours the Russian army made significant advances west of the town of Novotlatopil Awesome. Uh, and that if that is true that that, has, that is quite significant there is a large chunk of fields there um not confirmed anywhere else but yeah could could be something to watch going forward then we come towards uh robotina the defense forces have made partial success in the west of vabove and have advanced about a kilometer said colonel stupen uh spokesman for the for the joint press center in the area right that is to say, and it's not confirmed by any mapping. It's just the spokesperson for the uh, for the Ukrainians saying that there's some success around probably this area where this is the area. Sorry, this is the area where the R Ukrainians have pushed the Russians back, but then the Russians subsequently counterattacked and pushed the Ukrainians back. A kilometer 
is that's about 1.3 kilometers so a kilometer would be something like that um have they made a kilometer gain in this area anywhere possibly but i don't really have too much evidence other than that assertion from the ukrainians there uh and finally, the ISW in the area says a Russian mill blogger claimed that Ukrainian forces with armored vehicle support advanced to an unspecified position northwest of Vobove. A Russian news aggregator claimed two days ago that Ukrainian forces advanced near Vobove but failed to establish a foothold in the area. And I think that's what happened. They attacked, took some ground, and then were pushed back. A Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces successfully counterattacked between Robotny and Kopani after repelling a Ukrainian assault in the area. And another Russian mill blogger said that they counterattacked around Novoprokopivka, but without saying how it went. So the claims of the Russians are that they've counterattacked here, they counterattacked in Kopani and pushed the Ukrainians back a little bit. Uh, this would be completely plausible. I mean, the Russians are do seem to want to counterattack everywhere they lose land. Um, we'll have to see what develops there. There are not a lot of mapping changes. Well, no mapping changes is according to my mapping sources. And then we're going to go to this claim about activity near the Antoniski Bridge in a place called Poimo. Uh, Poima, sorry, Poima. Uh, there it is. So this is where the Ukrainians have traditionally, traditionally, over the last sort of month or so, been holed up under the bridge they've been hammered by russian aviation but they have eked out more territorial control around this area it seems as well as on the left bank of the Dnipro river all the way up to the bridge and indeed further on from the bridge too and then these claims came out uh well have come out this morning uh saying that and rebar has also been claiming that this is taking place that's the pro-russian source uh, there's a new landing attempt on the eastern Dnipro riverbank in Kherson region so this is the left bank bank coming down and that they might well have got control over that village but i'm going to say a few caveats first so andrew perpetua says i've not seen any evidence of ukraine crossing the river in any numbers in the absence of evidence i will assume what is happening is the same as what has happened multiple times already a small raid taken out of context and blown out of proportion the people who without any obvious evidence are claiming the story is a completely true are being careless in my opinion either there is evidence that they are hiding and they are hiding it in which case they shouldn't be talking at all or there is no evidence and they are lying for attention like maybe it could be real but there is no evidence not even romanov seriously do you think this guy would miss a neat road crossing it's like saying war gonzo would miss an attack on the man uh, granted romanov was just threatened by russia for covering the war too honestly um, but just please keep in mind that people promoting this before any evidence, no video, no photo, nothing, literally nothing they can point at. If nothing comes in the story, hold these people accountable. Even if something comes, demand they answer why they talk without evidence. So that's the caveat I'm going to approach this with. And no report says Ukrainian forces are targeted on the left bank of Kherson region near the railway bridge over the Verknaya Konka River south of uh, Pridnoprovska confirming presence in this area but it goes on to say information about the capture of poima still unconfirmed and in my opinion unlikely but those are the caveats and then i'm going to tell you what some people are saying now as far as where that particular bridge is you've got the Konka river uh, coming along here uh, where the ukrainians had had some uh, joy in this area moving up the Konka river towards uh, oleshki um, but I don't know where that particular bridge might be. Um, go and see if I can find it. Okay, so I found it now, and that is quite relevant because the claim is that the Ukrainians got as far as Poima down here. And on the way to Poima, there is a bridge that goes across the Dnipro, uh, and then a br that same sort of road crosses the Konka River, which is like a tributary in the delta. Uh, and it crosses it here, and it looks like that's what has been hit. Now, if that's been hit by the Russians and that bridge is destroyed, then, you know, that would indicate uh, that the Ukrainians are there. So that is, is certainly kind of, it doesn't verify the whole claim, but it doesn't disconfirm it. It's, it's you know, consonant with 
the claim that they have taken employment. Right, let's have a look at what the claims are. So the AFU 35th and 36th Naval Infantry Brigade, the Marines, have liberated the village of Poima in occupied left bank of Kherson and continue their advance. Of course, grain of salt, as we've heard. Um, so last night, at least four groups of the 35th and 36th Marine Brigade from the Katran Strike Group landed on the railway bridge at Olesh Oleshkinsky Island and tried to advance to Pischavinivka and Oleshki. Um, okay, so that is exactly here where, where I was just saying the bridge went towards and Oleshki is over there. So this general direction of which Poima is there. Um, right, the, as a result of artillery fire on enemy movement areas, eight people were injured. The advance of the Marines was suspended and the wounded were transferred to the shore for evacuation. In the afternoon, two assault groups of the FU 35th and 36th Brigades, after regrouping, continued their attack along the railway bridge. As a result of the breakthrough, with the support of artillery and first-person view drones, the Marines were able to occupy the village of Poima. There, enemy units took up a perimeter defense, and after reinforcements arrived, uh, they reached the northern outskirts of Pischanivka. According to some reports, several houses of the northern outskirts were occupied by Ukrainian formations. The tactical success of the uh, assault detachments of the 36th uh, Brigade creates a preconditions for a more active entry of the Katran strike group into battles in the Kherson direction. This is indirectly confirmed by the movement of counter-battery weapons to the contact lines, such as the Cobra and ANTPQ-36 radars, as well as the Bukovel electronic warfare stations, which, as a rule, are kept at a distance because of their value. And a question arises, how was such a breakthrough allowed to reach two populated areas? We wrote for several months that there is an abridgehead of the armed forces of Ukraine in the island zone and in some areas of the left bank of Dnipro, but no measures were taken. I would like to believe that the threat will now be taken more seriously. Looking at the actions of the APU, there are clearly consistent attempts to expand the bridgehead before the offensive. Today's attack on the airfield of Berdyansk is one of the preparatory stages. The use of ATACMs increases the threat level for aviation, even in the deep rear, which may force the command to pull it further away from the line of contact. This will increase the period from departure to the involvement of the Russian Air Force to support ground forces, which is beneficial for the airfield in the south. Given that the Berdyansk airfield is out of action for a while, the next target is likely to be Jankoy, which I agree with, and other bases in Crimea. They are one of the main obstacles for conducting a full-scale operation on the Dnipro. Um, so that is, as according to Rebar, uh, that's the Rebar claim, which is why we're seeing quite a few of these Rebar maps. Um, and that is the, the extent of been highlighted here the extent of the Ukrainian advance as according to rebar but there is no no actual evidence yet of this other than you know that bridge being targeted p star 11 says there is more this morning with a more detailed account of yesterday's action by the russians ukrainians are tight-lipped more and more reports this morning from the Russian telegram channels of serious developments on the left bank of Kherson. They mention a systemic attempt by Ukraine to degrade logistics to prepare for a crossing. The alleged goal is to capture Oleshki or Kazachi Lahiri. Uh, units of the Ukrainian armed forces landed on the side of the Dnipro and occupied the village of Poima. By the way, not so long ago, Comrade Romanov wrote that Ukrainian armed forces are planning to, to launch large-scale offensive operations against the Kherson region from Oleshki, Holoprestan, and Novaya Kokovka, Nova Kokovka, from October the 10th. And here they are. But as with the case with Kirill Fedorov's warnings about the airfield in Berdyansk and the need to protect equipment, Romanov was brushed aside because those big... Those with big stars on their shoulder straps, no more. And now we have been observing the results of their knowledge and military experience for a couple of days now. In the Kherson direction, there are concrete signs of the armed forces of Ukraine preparing to f uh, to force the Dnipro. During the day, in the area of the village in, uh, of Peshkanovka, in, an enemy deep reconnaissance group was operating and killed two elderly civilians. I mean, really? By nightfall, information was received about the capture of several houses on the outskirts of the village by enemy for small, small enemy forces. In addition, the... Is that forces of small enemies? Just small... Whole small enemy forces? I don't know. Uh, in addition, the Ukrainian armed forces, Marines, occupied the village by midnight floodplain... Um, six kilometers east of the Antonitsky Bridge. The armed forces of Ukraine are preparing marine units to rush across the Dnipro to attract, uh, to, to reach a line uh, of Pidstepny, uh, the Cossack camp, so that's Kazachi Lahiri, Krinky. Previously, the enemy fired at bridges over canals on our side of the Dnipro to disrupt logistics. At night, 
urgent airstrikes by our aircraft were planned on the islands uh, so on and so forth so that is to uh, talk of all of these kind of areas we'd heard previously of uh, bridgehead for the ukrainians around because actually lahiri and then it kind of went silent we didn't really hear about that but the Pidstepny, pishkanivka because actually lahiri poima all of these places and onto uh, aleshki could be targets for the ukrainians or this just could not be true uh still waiting for confirmation uh of these of these claims so anyway um that is well that might be what is happening in this area we'll have to wait and see uh, or it could be that the ukrainians don't want that information to get out because it is much more secretive and they want operational security but obviously i'm producing claims of the russians that are out there on social media um, platforms so I'm just letting you know what they are. The Russians will know what's going on. The Ukrainians will know what's going on in that area. And I don't think we're going to make much difference to that. So, uh, yeah, that that we've talked previously about how difficult it will be for the Ukrainians to get across the Dnipro and get large amounts of equipment across there. Uh, it would have been really good for them to try and meet up and do some large overarching pincer movement. Think of the number of troops you'd and equipment and you need a serious breakthrough up in Robotina, Robotina which never happened uh, so that may have put paid to this Dnipro act or they might still be thinking well we've got the forces there there's still value in moving across the river divert attention from other areas and that could help Ukrainians in the Robotina area I don't know who knows there are there are lots of options there is whether it's worth the costs of doing that and the loss of equipment and men uh, uh, or men and women as we learned today so anyway thank you so much for watching please like subscribe and share really appreciate all of your support I'm doing a live stream tonight which is a co-stream uh, there's a, a much bigger channel called myth vision that I do a lot of philosophical work with having the past he released a video uh, interviewing his father, who is a former Special Forces fighter for the for the U.S. Special Forces, and he interviewed him, and they they made sort of statements about Israel Palestine conflict, and fifty percent of his audience said, "Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm well with you." And fifty percent of his of his audience bit his head off, and was like, "So he's like, okay." I need to step back and he's asked me to come on and just I, I'm not an expert on the area at all. We're just going to talk a little bit about the challenges, about biases, about what's going what's going on, really, or what the options are going forward and how challenging that is. And hopefully, you know, we'll we'll drive through a, a middle path through the quagmire that is the Israel-Palestine conflict. Come and check that out. We're co-streaming, so both on his channel and my channel. I've never done it in the way that we're going to do it tonight. All the comments are going to go into one one place for us to, to see. So it's going to be quite difficult to know who's commenting from its channel. But nonetheless, do come and check that out. That's on my ATP Geopolitics channel. Check the live tab. Anyway, take care. Speak soon.